This is Golden State Warriors Today by Chat Sports. Chase Sr. here with you. We begin today's show with this. According to reports, the Warriors, and this will make a lot of people happy in Dub Nation, are reluctant to trade away any of their young players in a deal that would bring in Kevin Durant. As for who those young players are, we've talked about these young guns on this roster and the benefit of keeping them on the team while still winning NBA championships, building for now as well as the future. We're talking Jordan Poole, James Wiseman, Jonathan Kaminga, as well as Moses Moody. And this is part of the genius of general manager Bob Myers, who even with winning four NBA championships during his tenure, I think is still somewhat overrated as being arguably the best executive in all of basketball because of how he's able to handle the luxury tax, maneuver the salary cap, but also replenish and reload this roster and keep some of these stars happy. This report coming from Michael Scotto of Hoops Hype about the Warriors not wanting to trade these young guys away, we'll take a look at why they're valuable on this basketball team, giving you the best analysis that any Warriors YouTube channel has to offer, and also the implications of what keeping them means and my thoughts on this subject matter. The Warriors have several young assets on paper, including Jordan Poole, Jonathan Kaminga, James Wiseman, and Moses Moody. But Golden State would be reluctant to give up all these assets in a Kevin Durant trade proposal. And here's what I think Golden State is thinking after winning yet another NBA title and hoisting Larry O.B., having another parade in San Francisco. You lose Gary Payton II and Otto Porter Jr., notably in free agency. They left for the money that the Warriors weren't willing to pay them, and they certainly earned it. It's not a knock on them. It's being financially responsible if you're the Warriors and keeping in mind that you're paying a lot of big contracts currently, and you might pay some in the future to Andrew Wiggins and Jordan Poole. Why are the Warriors okay with losing GP2 and Otto Porter Jr., though? And some fans have had a problem with the Warriors' lack of moves in free agency. In my opinion, Golden State sees a path. They have this vision of wanting its young players to step into larger roles, and they have the talent to do so, even if they're young, even on a team that's ready to go back-to-back. -back. I love the blend of experience, youth, and athleticism, and the Warriors have really done something that's never been done before. They won an NBA championship while still making high-end draft choices throughout the last couple of drafts, and one of them we've barely seen in James Wiseman. Now, as we continue to move forward on today's show, I value your responses, your thoughts, and your opinions, so I want you to get them in into the comment section right now. Grade the Warriors' current roster for me as it exists right now from 1 to 100. 1, they're terrible and you're just delusional. 100, the best. Let me know right now in the comment section. Now, here's where keeping Jordan Poole is really valuable for Golden State. Elite level scoring upside, the perfect volume offensive player when either Steph is out because of load management and to keep him healthy for the playoffs, kind of like what the Warriors were able to do last year when he got injured. If he does get injured, then Poole can be that go-to guy. Or when Curry's on the bench, Poole can fill in and be an elite offensive threat. Here's also where Jordan Poole is very valuable. You're going to have to pay him at some point in the future, but he continues to get better on a yearly basis. He's only 23 years old, and down the road in the future, in his late 20s, can he be the future Steph Curry replacement? He certainly has a lot of elements to his game that Curry has. I'm not comparing the two. I'm just saying they could fulfill similar roles. Now we pivot to James Wiseman. I'm intrigued by the player. You watch him in NBA Summer League. Game two, not as good as game one, but still had a couple of blocks, took a three, and looked pretty good. Wiseman, an insanely gifted big who has all-world potential if he's able to stay healthy. That's the big caveat, and that's the big thing where the Warriors front office is holding their breath. He's also a two-way force. High ceiling on both ends. He can be an impact player offensively and defensively with versatility on both ends of the deck. And he adds yet another weapon offensively and defensively as a rim runner. A really good athlete. A shot blocker. What doesn't always show up on the stat sheet. Altering shots at the rim and scaring guys into bad shot opportunities or they have to rush into thing they have to pass it out to the three-point arc that leads to a turnover and we know the Warriors thrive in transition and then offensively low block baseline jumper fadeaway jumper has the elbow J 
If he's able to continue to develop the three-point shot, he can cause some steals with his wingspan as well. That's the value that Wiseman brings to the table. And if you think about this Warriors championship run over the last near decade, they've never had a big as gifted as James Wiseman. And the owner of this franchise, one of the best in professional sports, he understands that. He sees it. He knows it. He's a real one. He's one of the best owners in the sport for a reason. Here's what he had to say about James Wiseman and Joe Lacob. I will just tell you, I think he has the potential to be an enormously positive addition to the minutes rotation on our team. He is a monster. I've been watching basketball all my life. I have not seen many players do what he can do. Now, the haters will say Wiseman stinks, but that's because of the injuries. The real ones know that Wiseman can really play. I just broke it down. I gave you my thoughts, and we've talked about it a lot here on Warriors today. If you don't see the ability in James Wiseman, I just don't think you know basketball, frankly. Now, we have a great sub battle going on here at Chat Sports as we like to compete just like the Warriors do on the basketball floor. Lakers, Warriors, a great rivalry in the Western Conference in the NBA, an even better rivalry here in the Chat Sports studios. Why is that? Because over the last month, Golden State Warriors today has picked up nearly 11,000 new subscribers as the largest, best, most consistent, and entertaining and informative Warriors channel on YouTube. You want to stay in the know with all things dubs? You want videos damn near every single day? Hit that red sub button down below or go to youtube.com slash Warriors TV and let's overtake the Los Angeles Lakers report here at Chat Sports. To Jonathan Kaminga now and his value to this team. All the makings of being a legit number two on a title team if he develops. That's like best case scenario. I'm talking Jalen Brown type of player. Athleticism, it wows you on both sides of the deck, offensively and defensively, because this guy has so much ability. And like Jordan Poole, like James Wiseman, part of the craziness of what Bob Myers has been able to maneuver, he too, very young. He, too, a teenager, only 19 years old, and the Jalen Brown comps are real, especially when you watch what he was able to do on Tuesday night in the NBA Summer League. Bad debut at the end of last week, redeemed himself against San Antonio, really good in back-to-back -back games against the Spurs and Celtics. 29 points, 11 of 22 from the field, 2 of 7 from 3, that's okay. He's just trying to work on the three-point shot, and the in-game reps are very important. A steal and a block, too. This guy can just be an excellent player on both ends of the floor, and he's certainly shown those flashes throughout his NBA career in one single season. I'm in the moody to talk about Moses Moody. Moody, the last guy who we have to talk about as far as one of the young guns on this team. Do you like my singing? Let me know. If you don't, let me know. Moody can be a very reliable three-point shooter coming in off the bench, and that too, very, very important for a championship-level team. To have that depth, to have guys who can fulfill certain roles throughout the regular season. We saw Moody really play well when the Warriors were resting some guys, and he was able to get some good burn in the playoffs at a couple of decent moments, and in the summer league. He's been somewhat up and down, somewhat Jekyll and Hyde, but I'm confident that Moody can also be a good player, partially because of the Warriors player development program. So before we get out of here on today's particular show, who is the best Warriors young player? We just talked about all of them here on the show. Let me know in the comment section, drop a name, and we appreciate you for supporting the program.